Hi students. Okay, so this next drawing tutorial is going to be items that you would find on a pirate treasure map. Awesome. Um, but I thought it would be cool to show you how you could weather your paper to make it look a little older so that it has that authentic feel. Any kind of um, good paper would work better than this. I have regular computer paper and it's working fine, um, but sketchbook paper, watercolor paper, brown paper bag even, would be stronger than this. So I'm using this because it's really all I've got. Um, I started by ripping the edges and putting a watercolor wash on it, and I didn't really love it, and also my tray doesn't have brown for some reason, so I was like, well, let me think about this another way. So I tried coffee. My students know I love coffee, um, and this worked really well. I used it like a wash, um, just over the whole thing and let it dry, and I got this kind of cool, let's see if you can see it, like speckled effect, like kind of a stain right here especially, but it wasn't dark enough. So the next one, I did this, and then when it dried, I did another coat. And then because I was a little impatient, I actually think I'm going to hold it this way, because I was a little impatient, I got the hair dryer, and while I was hair drying it, I added a little bit more, and because it was drying faster than the coffee could spread across the paper, I got these cool stains. I used the glass um, stove top to paint this on, and then plugged the hair dryer in, in the kitchen. A floor would work fine as long as it was like a tile floor. You obviously don't want to paint water onto um, like a wood floor, or you could put a piece of plastic down and work on that as well. And now I have a nice paper ready for my pirate treasure map. Okay, sit tight. Okay, so I'm going to do some basic items that would belong on the land and the sea for a pirate treasure map. And then if you want to stay with me, I'll switch over to a fresh piece of paper and do a couple things that are a little bit more advanced. The first things that would go on a treasure map, of course you'd have an island area and a water area, so you need items to go on the land part of the map and the water part of the map. On the land, you could have a couple hills to show that it's you know, a raised area. You could also do this with mountains just a little bit more jagged at the top. Kind of working your way up the paper and you don't really want all the mountains to look the same. So you want to try to give them each their own shape. If you want a volcano, you can have a dip in the top. You can have you know, the lava running down the side and then you can have the little lava eruption. If you want a palm tree, make these palm shaped leaves and they radiate out from the center spot at the top of the tree trunk. The trunk can either you know stand alone or sit in the sand. If you're going to give this coconuts, you really want the coconuts to sit up, nested up under the palms. They cannot sit out here because the coconut's too heavy for these palms, and they could also be, you know, kind of on the ground. The anchor would go on the land but near the water. It would show the people reading the map where to dock the boat. So you start with a circle, leave the circle open because in reality a rope would run through it. The line down here, across here. You make an open V. And then this area, this metal is a little thicker, so you can come back here and just do this and this. And then you can give this a, like a little 
arrow shape pointing up. That would help to catch the anchor on something on the ground. If you're going to do a treasure chest, you can make the front side of the chest like this, two lines down, parallel, and then two lines straight up and down for the edges of that front of the chest, and then this for the side. You'd make this into a V right here by adding this. And then I'm going to give a curve right there for the side of the top. This front is going to be parallel to this line here. So you make that straight across there. The top here. Notice I, I didn't go the whole distance because this part is going to be connected with a curve. Inside, you can have a whole bunch of really cool, like, you know, gems and gold and have a whole bunch of colors in here. You can have this strand of pearls hanging over the side. So fun. Items in there. And then maybe some, you know, fell out along the ground. Which makes it look like it, it just can't hold everything. There's so much in it. For the items that would go in the water, you're going to show that they're sitting in the water with this wave line. It helps the viewer know that this is the water, and it also helps you as an artist because you don't have to draw the whole item. I'm going to draw five things for you. The first is a shark fin. Right, for shark infested waters is great. The next is a whale tail. Make this shape here. Kind of like a bird, but with the wing ends pointed up. And bring this down. Don't touch these together because you're going to put them here for the whale. If you do want to draw more of the whale, like this, you would start with a curve up and down, kind of like you're going to make a sun, like a setting sun, but don't go all the way, because then you're going to come back up for the tail, and then right back into the water. I smiley face if you want, blow hole, and the water spray. For the sea serpent, I break this up into three sections, the head, the body, and the tail. The head, right, peeking out here. Make it happy, happy little fella. And then the body here. And then the tail there. And then the other thing you can do with this is put the spikes along the back if you want to to make it look a little bit like just a little bit more foreign. Kind of like a dinosaur. For the boat or the ship, you're going to start in the back 
with a shape that is taller than the rest of the boat's uh, wooden part. So this is raised and then come down a little bit and then this for the rest of the boat and that for the front. Curve, curve, and then connect these two. It's going to be your sail. And then remember the mast is a post, so it's going to run right through here. And then if the wind is pushing the sail this way, it is going to push the flag that way. You can add these holes for cannons, and you have a ship. Okay, so this is a great place to start for items that belong on the land and items that belong in the water. If you want to sit tight, I'll demonstrate a couple more things that are a little bit more challenging for my more advanced artists. switching over to a thinner marker. All right, so let's talk about the palm tree. You could make the palms a little bit more specific. If you give them a zigzag line, but the zigzags have to go in opposite directions. So zigzag out and zigzag out the other way until they meet at the point. Zigzag out, zigzag out to a point. I can typically only fit about five palms in this way, and then you know the tree trunk, maybe a little bit of crisscrossing, and into the sand. For my mountains, you're going to do them the same way to start. Jagged and a little irregular. But one thing you can do to make them a little bit more authentic is give them a kind of similar zigzag down from one of their top points. And then lines down from that. Can make it look, you know, pretty rocky. For the ship, I'm going to do the basic shape that I did for the first one, but I'm going to make it a little bit more involved. I'm also going to see if I can focus this screen just a little bit more. That might help. So I'm going to start with the basic shape for the bottom. That comes in a little bit across and up, down, and then for the sails, you're going to give it more sails. So you are going to give it this first one, but then you're going to give it another one on top of that, a little bit smaller. Give it three here in the front. And then this one curves out to the back. That's attached there. And then you do have three masts. One for this sail. One for this sail. and one for this. And of course you're still lining up 
the masts so that they appear that they went right behind the sail. And flag. If you want to do a legend, right, like a key that would show this, um, this little icon means this, you could do it as a scroll. So for a scroll, I'm going to start by bringing a, a loop-de-loop -loop shape around and then down to curl in the other way. And then I'm going to make a couple lines that are parallel, one here, one here, one here, and then what little is visible of these edges. I do want to close those up. And then I'm going to make a line that mirrors this and a line that mirrors that. So this one is going to curl out. And this one is going to curl in. Legend. For the compass, you make a couple circles. My circles are not going to be perfect. And then you want to label the directions north, south, east, and west. So I'm going to start with a center circle. I'm going to have an outside circle. Hmm. Not the best, not the worst. Make this one a little bit bigger. And then north, south, east and west. And these letters, if you want, can be like really elaborate. Each of these is going to get an arrow pointing towards it, but the way they handle the arrow, it would be like a long, kind of thin triangle. It can go past the edge of the circle, no problem. I see my west isn't quite lined up, which is unfortunate, but on my good piece, I would never have just done it in Sharpie. And then each of these get a line straight down the center. And then one half of these gets colored in, and it's always the same side. So like once you pick a side, stick with it. And then you can do something to acknowledge, you know, that there is a northwest, but it should not be as elaborate. Okay, I hope that this has been helpful. Enjoy making your pirate treasure map, and I'll talk to you soon.